In this video, I'm going to show you how to knit with two colors in one row. We also refer to it as a knitting fair isle or a colorway knitting. So we're going to use two colors in one row. I've knit up a little cuff here uh, just for demonstration purposes. I'm also using a thicker yarn um, just so you can see better what I'm doing. Um, the thing you shouldn't do when you're going to do fair isle knitting or um, color work knitting is just uh, knitting the stitches as you see them in the pattern. I'm going to uh, show you what I mean. I've got here, uh, I've got a very nice uh, dark green yarn here. So the contrast is bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Um, when I go, uh, when I go ahead and do some fair isle knitting, I always tend to use one hand for one color and one hand for the other color. So I'm going to, uh, hold the green yarn in my right hand and the white yarn in my left hand. Um, when you knit, for instance, uh, three stitches in one color and three stitches in the other color, it's very important not to do this. So I knit one, two, three green stitches, and then oh, one, two, three white stitches, one, two, and three green stitches. And again, this is not the way to do it. It would be very, very easy if this was the best way to knit Fair Isle. But I'm gonna show you in the back here that uh, you get very long floats, as they call them. So uh, the yarn is carried uh, behind the other stitches. I've made some white stitches here. There's a long green uh, float behind it. So the contrasting yarn is making a very short trip from there to there, which makes it very not stretchy. It's, a, it's going to be a very tight knit. And if you're knitting socks, of course you want the socks to uh, fit. And if the socks don't fit, then you won't wear them because you can't wear them. What we have to do is catch the floats inside your knitting while you are doing that. Um, so these long floats, we want to avoid, the, avoid them. On the other side, on this needle, I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, I'll have to uh, share with you some information. So I made a little paper. What we're going to do when we're catching floats, we're going to do it every other stitch. Now that's uh, very easy, easily said, not so easily done. If we're going to catch our stitches every other stitch, that means that when you make one stitch in a color and then you have to change the other color, you can uh, choose between catching the floats or not catching the floats. That's easy. So I'm going to put a dot in it. So I'll, I'll weave the stitch in. If you're going to make two stitches of a color, then you don't do them both. You can pick the first or the second stitch. I'll pick the first, that's something I always do. If you always pick the second one, that's fine. You actually have to try and make, uh, uh, and weave in the ends, weave in the, the contrasting colors at the beginning and at the end of a new color. So if you have three stitches of a new color, then you weave in the first stitch and you weave in the third stitch. After that, there's another color coming. So you'll weave in the contrasting color here and somewhere else. With four stitches, it's difficult to do it every other stitch because you'll do the first one and you'll tend to do the third one, but that's not the part where you change color. So you take the fourth one. And in between, there will be two stitches without any catching floats. With five stitches, it's very easy. So you take the first one, you skip one, you'll weave in the third one, you skip one, you weave in the last one. It gets a little tricky with six stitches, so I do the first one, the third one, I skip two stitches, and I weave in the last one. With seven stitches, that's an uneven number, it's very easy again, so the first, the third, the fifth, and the last. We tend to make patterns that only have seven stitches of one color in a row. Um, you could do more stitches, but then you have to be very careful uh, that it will be stretchy enough. So we uh, tend to go to a maximum of seven stitches in one color. Um, here is a little graph of uh, one of the 
patterns that we made. It's a very simple pattern. You can learn it by heart very easily. So it's uh, you always read from the bottom right uh, right hand side to uh, the top left side. So we'll do uh, three stitches in one color, and then we'll switch to three stitches in another color. And we'll repeat that all over till we did all the stitches. For the second and the third row, we'll do exactly the same. So you have to do three rows of this, and then three rows exactly the other way around. So you'll do three stitches of the other color, and then three stitches of the first color. This means, and now I'm taking my red pen, that I'm going to weave in the contrasting color in the first and in the third stitch, also in the first stitch of the second color, and in the third stitch of the second color. So we'll do that here and here, there and there. And you can see a pattern emerging. No, that's wrong. Here and here, there and there. So not there. The first and the third of every color. The first and the third, the first, the third. And we'll keep weaving this in. And I'll show you what kind of effect that has on the back of your knitting. So back to our network. I'll put these stitches on the cable, these stitches to the front, and we'll have the green yarn in our right hand, the white yarn in our left hand. You can also switch them around, but make sure you're consistent in doing that. So if you start with the white yarn in your uh, left hand, always keep the white yarn in your left hand and always keep the green yarn in your right hand. There are uh, four different ways of knitting a stitch when you're doing fair isle knitting. The first and the second way I've already shown you. So you can knit one continental style. You can knit one in the traditional style. You can knit one. And if I want to make a white stitch, but I want to weave in the green yarn, I put my uh, right hand needle in the first stitch. And first I'm going to wrap the green yarn. Then I'm also going to wrap the white yarn. And then I'm going to wrap the green yarn back so that I'm not knitting it. But when I then finish this stitch, I'll have a white stitch and a green stitch wrapped around the yarn in the back. I hope you can see that. The second stitch doesn't need any weaving in. So I just knit it continentally. And the third stitch, I'm going to do the same again. So I'll knit, I'll wrap the green yarn, the contrasting yarn, the yarn that I don't want to knit actually. Then I'm going to wrap the white yarn, which I want to wrap, which I want to knit. And then the green yarn goes back over. So if I finish the stitch, it's a white stitch, but in the back, you can see no longer having a lot of floats. It's making a kind of a zigzag pattern at the, at the back. So there's a lot of more, a lot more uh, elasticity. It's going to stretch a lot more. So your sock is probably going to fit better. Now, uh, if I want to make green stitches, I've made three white stitches. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a green stitch and I want to wrap the white yarn. Now the white yarn is my contrasting color. So I'm not just going to insert my needle in the first stitch. I'm going to insert it and also wrap it under the white yarn. It's easy because in continental style, it's just presenting itself here. I'm going to make a green stitch. And by finishing the stitch, it's go the white yarn is automatically going to fall off my needles. So this is wrapping a contrasting color when knitting continental style. Now, I'm going to knit just with my right hand, no wrapping. And now I'm going to insert my needle again under the white yarn, wrapping the green yarn around. And when I finish the stitch, the white yarn is automatically going to fall off of my needle again. I'll do that one more time. Now with three white stitches. So insert the needle. I wrap the yarn that I don't want to knit. 
Then I wrap the yarn that I do want to knit. Then I wrap the yarn back so that I only knit a white stitch. But the yarn is now on top of the white working yarn. Also, you can see that there's a little loop here. But don't worry about that because the next time you're going to pull a little on your yarn, the green yarn disappears into the back. Second stitch, I'm just going to knit. And the third stitch will also go uh, with the wrapping of the green yarn. So I wrap one green stitch, I make a white stitch and the green thread goes back. So I have three white stitches. And when I pull my yarn, the yarn disappears to the back. I'll make three more green stitches. The first stitch needs to wrap the white yarn. So I put my needle under the white thread. I wrap my yarn and finish the stitch. Second one just gets a wrap. And the third one goes into the stitch and under the contrasting color. If he wants to participate, then wrap the stitch and finish the stitch. And that is how you knit Fair Isle with catching the floats on the back. I hope this works. Good luck and have a lot of fun.